that we can come in here and we can we we have a chance to to watch the old world die away and a new world be formed and we can be the ones who decide what it is that is going to happen and we can use the internet and everything and we never had these kinds of things these instruments before and it is a seminal moment in history and it's we we must we cannot, you know, I, I just came back from Amsterdam and I did a documentary with John Lash and um, he wrote a book called Not in His Image, which is a great book and I highly recommend it. It's about the return of the goddess and he talks about the patriarchal religions and how they have created an abuser abused relationship with us where they're abusing us and, and, and we're accepting the abuse and then when we ask them why they're abusing us, they tell us that they're doing it because they love us which is abuser abused relationship and we're constantly oh they love us they like we're scratching well they don't act like they love us but you know maybe there's something here we can't figure out but you know we know that it's 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 bullshit and and and, and so this 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 was formed at the end of the last age this this patriarchal society probably for the best of reasons to be honest with you it was very dangerous and men were trying to feed their families and Frankly, they went and killed people and stole their stuff, and that's how it all got started. But now here, we're here at the end, and, 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 and that world is dying, and it's going to die on its own, or we're going to kill it, or it's going to kill us, or we can transform it. And that's our choices. And so we have to say, well, you know, what is it that we have to do? And the first thing is, you know, right now, today, everybody here must become self-reliant. There, you cannot depend on a Messiah, on this abuser-abused relationship to occur. There's no Messiah that's going to come save us. There's nobody that's going to come save us. We've got to come to grips with that. There's no politicians. There's nobody that's going to save us. Only we are going to save ourselves, and we're going to do it with our wits and our intelligence and our ingenuity. And, and we've just got to get away from this thing where we've been indoctrinated to believe that there's some outside force that's aliens. It doesn't matter. They're going to come in and save us. They're not. They, our own society isn't going to save us. It can't be saved. It is over for it. And we need to like celebrate this. We need to say, yeah, things are out of control. And you know what? That's good because we were never in control. So what are we worried about? You know, I mean, come on. And this is what this is what's going on in the entire world right now. And we have to celebrate the fact that the edifices that supported this false economy this fiat money system, this crazed world where, you only, where your businesses only have to make a profit for 90 days. They don't have to worry about anything else, just what happens in 90 days, that's all you have to worry about. That is insane. It's predatory capitalism. It, it, it has to be outlawed. But we're not going to get them to outlaw it. So we just have to reject them. That's the key to this. We have to reject them. We have to create our own scenes. We have to create our own communities. We have to reject every single thing that they are doing. Their wars, their pollution, their food, if you want to call it that, and all of the other things that they're doing, and they're doing it mindlessly, and we must forgive them and have compassion for them, but we shouldn't fall into what they're doing, into their games. And, and so Nostradamus said that at the end of time, there's this great bifurcation. The human race was going to split, he said. And a very small percentage are going to actually achieve a, a modicum of enlightenment. And the rest are going to fall into almost a wasteland of horror. And, and we must try to salvage as much of it as we can. But be careful. We don't want to salvage the system that caused all this. So we want to be careful about what we're asking for. You're not going to have all the material things that you have now. It's just not going to happen. Very few people have it, but the rest of us are not going to have it. And you know what? That's good. Because if we keep going on, there's not going to be any forest left. There's not going to be topsoil left. There's not going to be any fish left. It's going to be all gone. Thanks. Number four. Okay. Uh, so, um, uh, so what I'm trying to say is, is that um, uh, 
we need to Aikido the moment. We need to take the strength of our enemies and use that against them. We're not as strong as they are, but we can use their media, their internet, all the things that they've given us, and thank God we have these things, and, 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 it's, and it's truly a miracle. Technology is an incredible thing. And we need to use it to, um, I hate to use the term subvert the do, uh, dominant paradigm, but why not? And, and we need to undo what has been done. We need to go back to a more rural lifestyle. I know a lot of you aren't going to like that, but it's, it's going to be necessary. And, we've, it, 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 and we're going to create a world that is going to be a lot better. I mean it. We're going to be a lot happier. It doesn't seem like it now. So the next four years are going to be really not very good. But at the end of the four years, it'll be fine. One of my old friends, Terrence McKenna, used to say, we must live as if the apocalypse has already occurred. And what he's saying is that we must, we must live as if it's already after the end of this age. All of us. We must start now doing it. And if we do that, then we can create this future. It will already be there by the time we need it. And so that's what really what these 2012 conferences are about. How could, hey, thanks so much. Um, how can we create this future and what future is it that we want to create? And I'm not going to dictate it to you. I can't. I don't know. You know, I just know a few simple basic things. You know, we definitely want to have enough food to eat. We definitely want to love each other. We definitely want to have a community. We don't want to freeze to death. There's a few things and that's all we need. If we, so if we make our collective secret, our collective view of the world of the future, we have to keep it really simple. We can't make it complicated. We can't say we want a, a socialist paradigm where the workers take control of the factories or we want, you know, a world where everybody sits in meditation all day. These, are not gonna, these aren't going to happen, but what we can do is say, I want a world of community, of love, of, of nonviolence, and then we can, I think we can create a world that will work, but we're not going to create a world that can work if we go on like we are. Okay, now I'm going to run you through here because I want to show you the secret of the end of time. Okay, um, these are the symbols on the cross of Henry. There's the angry sun. Keep going. Next. Keep going. Okay, uh, the, the star on, on it looks like the star in the tarot deck. The moon looks like the moon in the tarot deck. Keep going. The sun. Nope. I jumped ahead. The sun looks like the sun. And then the last one is the day of judgment. And that's the key to understanding the cross of Henry. Keep going. Uh, that, these are, this is Notre Dame Cathedral. Fulcanelli tells us that alchemists built the Gothic cathedrals. Uh, keep going. So I'm just going to show you some of the incredible architecture that's on these Gothic cathedrals. If you tried to build Notre Dame today, it would cost you about $2 trillion. If you could find the artists. Keep going. Which you couldn't. Um, keep going. I'm just going to get to the end here. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you one of the ways that we interact, okay, stop there. That's the Earth's magnetic field, okay? And we, uh, if you ever go to the North Pole, you know that we have a magnetic field because you see the aurora borealis come down from the top, right? That's the electromagnetism collapsing in on the, on the field. So the Earth has this donut-shaped field around it, which um, could be called its, its higher dimensional body or its 4D body. And uh, the Earth sits at the center of it. Let's go to the next one, please. Oh, this is the alignment of the center of the galaxy. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, there's the four signs that are at Chart Cathedral, which I could get into, but you can read my book. Keep going. Keep going. That's Ophiuchus, which is the center of the galaxy. Very interesting sign. That's John Major Jenkins' uh, diagram from his book showing the galactic alignment in 2012. Keep going. Next. Next. There it is, the galaxy. Keep going. 
we're going to go through. OK, 